by subway or by bus, by bike or even by boat, most people in Berlin could live without a car and still be able to get anywhere easily and on time. More than 800,000 people in Germany work with car manufacturers and their suppliers. 52% of all global patents for automatic driving are filed by German companies. In the race for the technology and market leadership of automated driving, the German industry is starting from a strong position. This is one of the messages that came out of Concar Expo, an event promoted as the leading European trade show about connected cars, automated driving, and mobility solutions. Concar Expo is not an event that lists the big automakers among the exhibitors but it is a showcase for the companies developing the components and the software for autonomous driving. Berlin wants to be the leader in the race to autonomous driving as well as in many other fields and in the last decade the German capital has been rebuilding itself with these goals in mind. The first example of an autonomous vehicle on public streets in Berlin will probably be a minibus. Two self-driving minibuses are currently running at the campus Charité Mité, a hospital campus. The location was selected because medical campuses are like a microeconomic system. When it's time to introduce the technology to a larger system, the learning experience from this microsystem is more reliable than the simulations carried out in a lab. The two minibuses are EZ10 models, manufactured by the French company EasyMile. Currently, a self-driving minibus can be booked by app. It does not drive to a fixed timetable or on a fixed route. The latest generation of minibus from EasyMile can now also be recharged by induction. Deutsche Bahn, the German railway system, and the Berliner Verkehrsbetriebe the main public transport company of Berlin are working together on the development of autonomous driving concepts. Berlin has a precedent about innovation in public transportation. The first electric trolley was introduced for the first time in the Berlin suburb of Lichterfeld about 130 years ago by a young inventor, Werner Siemens. Living in the city without a car is also a scenario that is guiding the renovation of several districts in Berlin. Take, for example, 
Urbane Mitte, a diverse and multidimensional city quarter in the heart of Berlin. By day, the Urbane Mitte will be a place of work. By night, it will be a place to hang out. The area will promote sport and fitness activities early in the morning, shopping in the afternoon, and make it possible for everyone who lives and works here to get around without a car. Cycle and pedestrian axes will also be used to connect the areas, and the workplace will be attractive and surrounded by green space. In the race to autonomous driving, the city of Berlin does not intend to forget its troubled past. Testimonies of when the city was divided are everywhere in the city. At the Austral Convention Center, one of the largest exhibition spaces in the city, two slabs coming from the wall that separated the city are placed in the corridor that connects the hotel with the exhibition center. Elsewhere, elsewhere, in the elegant and quiet area of Spittelmarkt, at the entrance of the Marriott Courtyard Hotel, is placed a clean, redecorated, but still uncomfortable and odd-looking Trebant, the car imposed by the communist regime, since it could not allow its citizens to buy cars from the West. The car is a clear reference to history, as it is in stark contrast to the Five Star Hotel. By coincidence, many of the guests that looked at the old Trebant were going to learn about the future of automobile at the Cannes Car Expo. To watch more exclusive content from Expo Vista TV, just click on subscribe. See you next time.